Happy Solar Eclipse Day to you all. It's meteorologist Joe Martucci here. Some of you may have been talking about this since our last total solar eclipse that went through the eastern part of the United States in 2017. But we have our solar eclipse in totality, or where the moon will completely block out the sun, is in this shaded area in between these yellow lines you see here running from about Del Rio, Texas to Waco, Texas on northeast to Burlington, Vermont, and into Maine. Now, some of you may be making the drive here early today into upstate New York. Maybe some of you are already there and watching it, and I appreciate it if you are. We are looking at, as we get into total eclipse time for you in upstate New York, some areas of cloud cover, some areas of clear sky. The clear sky in the green areas, which look to be in Watertown and Oswego, as well as Plattsburgh here, clouds in a good portion of the Adirondacks in western New York. But this is what I will say. Even though you see these oranges and reds here, they should be high, thin clouds. So it's not going to completely block out your view of the eclipse during this time. We take a look at Atlantic City closer to home. What do we have? A partial solar eclipse. 85% of the moon will block out the sun. And it'll look a little kind of golden hazy out there, but it's not going to be dark like it is in totality. Even going from 99% totality to 100% totality is the difference literally between night and day when it comes to this. The peak part of the eclipse will be right around 3.24 p.m. And even if you're in Jackson Township or you're in Cape May, it's just a minute or two off of that. Here's a look at our future cast here. As we go into the day, we are seeing intervals of clouds and sun. It looks like the cloud cover will be north of the AC Expressway between 3 to 4 p.m. when we are getting into that maximum amount of eclipsing in our region. Otherwise, as we go into our Monday night, we're talking about a clear sky for us, and then the clouds come in on Tuesday. It's a dry day. It's actually a warm day, but then we get rain as we go into Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Let's take a look at our forecast conditions. We're starting out in the 30s for most places Monday morning. We will peak somewhere in the 60s inland, 50s at the coast here. We do have those clouds around during the eclipse time for us, mainly north of the expressway. And we have a very comfortable Monday night. Temperatures falling into the 50s and into just the 40s here. A uh, sign that spring is here in the region. Now, we do have tidal flooding around 7 to 11 p.m. On Monday, as well as 8 p.m. to 12 a.m. on Wednesday night, we will be in minor flood stage along the coast. This is the nuisance kind of flooding we've seen plenty of already this year. Little no property damage, but some of those bayside roads will have water on the shoulders or on that first lane of the roads as well. Here's a look at our inland seven-day forecast. Temperatures climb and climb and climb as we go into our Monday and Tuesday. 72 degrees for a high on Tuesday. And then here comes that rain for Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Temperatures in the 60s, though, in morning Temperatures only starting out around 50 to 56 degrees. So it's actually going to be damp, even a little muggy out there as we go into Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Tidal flooding likely at the shore on Wednesday, and then just looking for that plain rain on Thursday and Friday. You can check out more from me and our Lee Weather team with our Across the Sky podcast. New episodes come out every Monday, including today here on Monday, where we're talking about the Colorado State University hurricane forecast for the Atlantic Ocean. We speak with a researcher from the world-renowned hurricane forecasting team about why they are going with a record forecast for this season.